Welcome to Chapter 9, where we are going through all the steps to integrate Kasambi networks with the Adkio ecosystem. As we mentioned in previous chapters, this time we will review the options we have within Adkio to export information so that other external devices can benefit from this information. These devices can be a building's BMS, another programmable controller that is taking information from ours, an Adkio screen, an Adkio SCADA, etc. And remember that, for example, regarding the limitation of screens that can be connected through what we are going to see now to an Adkio controller, we have a maximum of 30, okay? Simultaneously. Very well, let's start by going to the export option in Adkio. Until now, exporting in Adkio is done only through the Modbus TCP protocol, okay? To activate it, we only need to press this switch and indicate what slave number our Adkio controller is in that network. Normally, setting it to 1 is enough. With this, we would have configured the Modbus variable server that is integrated within Adkio. Let's save it, and the only thing left to do is start adding variables. Let's confirm the changes. To add variables, we have here an icon with a plus symbol, which simply, if we press it, we will see all the variables that our controller is managing, and we will be able to select them. For this, what we can do is filter, for example, by device. Let's, in this case, filter by the Lithernet01 device. And if we wanted to filter by variables, I will do it, for example, with level. We will put asterisk level. And as you can see, it has already filtered only the variables that correspond to level. We have the option to select the variables we want to export one by one, or we also have the option to select them all. In the case that we select them all, as you can see, even if there are several pages, it is selecting even those we are not seeing. In this case, then, we are exporting all the level variables from our Kasambi network, from our devices, from our groups, and from our scenes. Let's then select this group of variables. It brings them here automatically, and we need to observe that here we have a column that is the address of this variable for export. As you can see, it is empty. We incorporate, to solve this, and so that we can fill this column quickly, a utility here that I am now going to explain. Let's then press here and tell it that we will start at address number one. As you can see, it has already numbered them all. And the only thing we would need to do for this to start working is save the changes and confirm. OK? With this, we are exporting 40 variables from Adkio. And as you can see, the way to select them is very convenient, as we can filter by device. For example, these scenes that were virtual, that were virtual variables that we had created, we can filter only by that device and export these scenes for example. Or if we want to export, for example, data from the system itself, processor temperature, processor load, disk occupancy, etc., we could also export them very easily. We simply select a couple of them from here. We select, it brings them to the end. As you can see, we go back to the top. We renumber again from one. And as you can see, we have 44 and 48, because as I was saying, these variables are 64-bit. Therefore, they do not go one by one, but by four and four. Okay? Do we want to remove values from this list? We simply select, we will remove these to leave only the ones we are interested in from the scenes. If we go to these dots, we have the option to delete. In this way, it has removed them from the bottom. There is another very interesting option, which is to make this entire table fully editable. Imagine that we want to change values in this position, for example, massively in all elements. Instead of having to go to the pencil to edit each one of them, in this way, we make the entire table editable, and we can directly write over the fields, okay? There is another part that can also be important in some cases. And it is that the export itself allows us to convert variables to another format to export them. This is very useful in cases where, for example, 
Within Adkio, we have a variable, like those usually received from climate machines, where that machine sends us, for example, a temperature multiplied by 100 because it is using an integer value to send the information. Therefore, it sends it multiplied by 100, and to use it, we would have to divide it. So, if we are using an Adkio screen or a SCADA, we have no problem because the destination tools that are reading that information can process it before displaying it. Both the screen design software and the SCADA have tools to operate on a value they receive before showing it to the user. On the other hand, other systems cannot do this, and let's say that the information must be sent as it is going to be displayed. In those cases, we can enter the variable. I will enter the last variable because, possibly, changing its format, this will take up more than the two bytes it is occupying now. And if we did it with one of the previous ones, this variable would overwrite the next one because they are placed consecutively. Therefore, I will do the example with the last one, and within the possibilities we have to edit the variable, we have here an option that is converters. This converter option, if we enter it, tells us that the output value is currently a uint, and that the value in adkio is a uint. Therefore, we are not making any conversion. Let's imagine that, although this variable we are using is the level, which is the illumination level of a Kasambi luminaire, instead of the level, this variable we are handling was a temperature, and we need to divide it by 100 to send it to the destination device. In this case, we will include an operation by clicking this plus, and the first thing we need to do is convert the variable type because a uint16 is an integer value and we cannot divide it, as it would not accept the decimals of the result. OK, so we need to convert this variable to something that does support decimals. To convert variables in Adkio, we have the cast option. We need to tell it what type the input value is. We see perfectly at the top that it is a uint16, so we select it, and the value we want to convert it to has to be a value that supports decimals. For example, float32. As you can see, this float32 has already been set at the bottom as our output value. Now we can divide it, so we use the divide option, and we will set it to divide by 100. OK? That is what we wanted to do. So, let's see that what we are doing is taking a value that in the export was a 16-bit integer. We need to divide it by 100. Therefore, we need to convert the variable to a type that supports decimals. After making this conversion, we can divide by 100 and confirm. We save, and we see that we already have a variable type that is a 32-bit decimal, which is different from what we had before, and this value will be exported not as it was in Adkio, but divided by 100. Let's reset the variable to how it was to work with it in subsequent steps. To do this, we simply delete the conversions we had made. And it remains exactly as we had it before. The last thing we will do in this video is return to the scripts we had made. Let's save this, return to the scripts we had previously for error management, and instead of displaying them as we talked about in a log, we will transmit the network number the device number, and the error code through the export to any device that is reading us, OK? To do this, we will quickly create a new virtual device, simply to keep it organized. We will say it is a memory type. We will call it errors. It will be of a virtual type, and it will have three variables. The first variable will be a netno, network number. We will say it is a 16-bit integer. As always, persistent, read and write, we save. Next, device no. 16-bit integer, persistent. And finally, error no. 
error number, where we will store that list we saw in the previous chapter, which explained exactly what is happening. We already have our three variables. We save, apply the changes. So, we will see that our device is called errors, with a capital E, and our variables, net no, device no, and error no, very well. Let's then go back to scripts, go to our error management script, and in the place where we displayed the error, instead of that, we will do the following. We will do devices right. First, device name. Errors. Second, variable name. Net no, comma, first value. The first value of the network we had here, and we paste it here. We have the first one. We will do, instead of a write, a write future. When we do several writes in a row to the same device, it is recommended to always use write future because it is much safer if the device does not support that write speed. In this way, Adkio will wait for it to be admitted before writing the next value. Therefore, whenever we write to a device, it is recommended to use write future. Okay? Alright, next line. We are going to copy this directly and paste it here. The next one was device number, and we had it in device no. Therefore, we paste it. One more, and the next one is error number, and we have the value as we see in the switch above in the variable ev.new value. So we are going to export that variable directly. We are going to write the value of that variable. Very well. Then we are going to comment on this line so that it no longer continues saving messages in the log, and we already have it. Instead of displaying a message in this log, what we are doing is passing those values to a real-time variable, so that this variable informs and the error can be displayed, for example, on a screen or in the SCADA alarm system. Okay? So let's save this and go to the export section and add all the fields of our errors device. As always, we number starting at 1 and verify that they are perfectly placed in their memory positions. We save, confirm the changes, and we are ready to use all these variables in a later step, which will be either the control screens or any of our SCADAs, both the server and the cloud. In the next chapters, we will dedicate ourselves to showing you how to design interfaces on our control screens and on our SCADAs. We will dedicate several chapters to each of them to explain everything in great detail, so you can have total freedom to create your own designs. Therefore, we are going to start a new section, and we will number these chapters again from one for screen design and also from one for SCADA design. See you in Chapter 1 of Interface Design on Adkio Screens.